A man seemingly vanishes from his job, and the question remains, was he a victim or was he an accomplice? Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Dale Kerstetter. Viewer discretion is advised. Dale Kerstetter was born and raised in Bradford, Pennsylvania, and he essentially spent his entire life there, with the exception of the time that he was in the Air Force. By the time this case occurs, he is 50 years old, he is happily married, and he has six children and two grandkids. Dale was described as a really fun father. He was one of the most compassionate people you'd ever meet. He was also described as one of the most honest people you would ever meet. His wife would say that, you know, he just couldn't stand lying to people. It just wasn't in his nature. He was faithful to his wife their entire marriage. He was faithful to his kids. He was faithful to his community. He worked hard his entire life to support his family. But while he worked hard at his jobs, he also loved to just have fun. He loved being outdoors, especially spending time with his family just outside, hanging out. And really, no one can really say a bad thing about him. I mean, sure, nobody's perfect, but he was just a very well-liked guy. On the show Unsolved Mysteries, one of his former managers would say that he was a very marginal employee. Described Dale as being kind of a slow worker. But in the same breath said that Dale was someone who actually should be praised because... He possibly saved dozens of lives and hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of materials. So Dale worked at the Corning's Glasswork plant. So years before this case happened, there was an incident there where a forklift accidentally rolled under a, a, a stream of like hot molten glass. And the this molten glass was beginning to pour onto the gas tank of the forklift. So Dale immediately jumps in the forklift and he drives it as far away as he can, which would then prevent an, an, an accident, a bigger accident from happening, like an explosion or anything like that, that would have, if it exploded, would have caused a lot of damage and would have definitely probably killed at least a few people. This takes us to September 13th, 1987. At approximately seven o'clock in the morning, a security guard for the Corning Glassworks plant named John Lindquist would enter the building because he was going to be taking over the shift for Dale, because at that time, Dale was the overnight security guard there. He was doing that for extra money. Dale had gotten to work the previous night at approximately 10.30 p.m. His, his shift didn't start until 11 p.m., but he relieved the other guard there named Art Peterson. According to Art, nothing seemed unusual with Dale at all. But then the next morning when Mr. Lindquist got in, he was expecting to see Dale in the office where the little security, you know, TVs were, but Dale wasn't in there. And he's like, okay, he's probably just around walking around checking out the place. So Mr. Lindquist goes to the break room area to put his stuff away. And he notices that Dale's lunchbox is just sitting on one of the tables next to a newspaper. Uh, Mr. Lindquist goes to, to look at it and he lifts up the newspaper and he actually sees Dale's keys there underneath the newspaper. Mr. Lindquist then opens up the lunchbox and he sees that Dale's lunch is in there completely untouched. The keys were the keys to the plant. Um, so that's a very unusual thing for him to have just left out in the open. So Mr. Lindquist walks around the entire plant and he cannot find Dale anywhere. He's, he's calling out for him. He's getting no responses. It's weird. Like, where the hell is Dale? This is extremely unlike him. But John Lindquist just sort of goes back, starts his job, and he just begins to take over the security job there for the morning. A couple of hours later, they actually find... Dale's red pickup truck in the parking lot of the plant. The car is unlocked. The keys to the truck are actually still in the ignition, which is strange because I believe the security guard the night before that Dale relieved literally saw uh, Dale's car keys, you know, him putting it into his pocket. Also in the truck was a pack, a full pack of cigarettes, 
They found a holster to a 22 caliber pistol that Dale owned, but the gun was not there. And they also found like this little backpack that Dale would use as like his day pack. So now this is getting stranger and stranger. Dale can't be found anywhere. His truck is here, keys in the ignition. All of his stuff is inside of it. Where the hell is Dale? Well, they begin to dig further. And so the, the protocol there is that the security guards are supposed to call every single hour on the hour to the call into the main factory. And Dale was doing that for, he did that for uh, t the 11 p.m. to midnight. But then after midnight, he never called. He never called in to check in. He missed several, obviously, hours of checking in. But the person over at the main factory was brand new and he didn't know that was the protocol until all of this started to happen. And that's when he found out that he was supposed to be getting those calls, but he didn't. At this point, Dale is reported missing. So they they get the police involved and the police go to the plant with some, with a, a canine unit to see if they can pick up Dale's scent. And the dogs actually do pick up Dale's scent and, and it basically moves along the path that Dale would have taken as a security guard. But then the dog picks up the scent going up a flight of stairs onto the second level, which is an area that was not really ever monitored by security guards. Like the security guards weren't supposed to be going up onto this floor. This was the area where the plant's uh, glass kiln was, which they refer to as the tank. And in that tank was extremely valuable uh, platinum pipe. And Dale's scent was picked up all the way to the tank. But Dale was not anywhere found on that second floor. He was not in the tank. You know, they kind of assumed, well, did Dale have a heart attack? Did something medically happen to him? But if that's the case, where is Dale himself? He was nowhere in that building. They did an extremely thorough search. They did have a, a giant uh, furnace there, but the furnace was never even turned on. It wasn't hot the following morning, so it's not like someone put Dale in the furnace and burned him up. Uh, they looked in the furnace, didn't find anything. I mean, he was just, he was not in the building. There was no sign of him anywhere. Then surrounding the plant was a lot of wooded areas. There was also like a little pond or a little lake or something like that. And they even searched with canines and they had search crews looking out there for Dale. They looked in the body of water. Again, they found nothing. So at that point, the, they begin to look at two, into the security cameras, and they only had three security cameras there at the plant. And so they go back to review the footage. At 10.40 p.m., this was about 10 minutes after Dale was confirmed to arrive. Dale, at 10.30, had sent the last night's security guard home 30 minutes early since Dale was there early. So this, the other security guard was no longer in the building by 10.40. But at 10.40 p.m., there is a masked intruder that enters through the guard, I guess, entrance. And then at 10.45 p.m., the footage will show, and by the way, I'm showing screen grabs from the security footage. These are the actual screen grabs, and it's, it's really poor quality. It's not, um, it's not super good. <laughs> it's, it's very dark. And so it's really hard to really make out any specific details on anything, but these are the images regardless. But at 10.45 p.m., the footage shows the masked intruder meeting, it looks like, kind of meeting up with Dale. They interact, the two of them, at the back of this corridor in the plant. It shows the two of them with Dale in front and the intruder kind of behind him, but also like next to him. And they are walking towards another portion of the plant. Now, obviously these cameras don't have sound, so you can't really say, you don't know what they're talking about or if they're talking about. It's also such bad quality that you can't tell if maybe the intruder has a gun, like maybe pointed into Dale's back or, or what. It's really hard to know exactly what was happening. All they have is the visual of Dale being kind of flanked by this intruder. They don't know if they were talking friendly to one another. They don't know if Dale was being coerced into cooperating or if Dale was helping this guy do whatever he was doing. Now, after Dale is seen walking kind of in front of this guy, he goes out of camera range and then Dale is never seen again on any camera, but the masked intruder is. So at one point, he, there is a camera up where the, uh, the kiln is up on the second floor, and you see the masked intruder walking up to 
this kiln. And then you can apparently see the guy taking the platinum pipe out of the tank. He actually has a saw and he's sawing it out. That is when they actually finally figured out that there was missing platinum. They didn't know that at first. They didn't really realize that or even bother to check that until they saw the footage of the guy cutting through the platinum pipe. And that's when they finally discovered like, holy shit, there's like hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of missing platinum now. This happened really late at night when there are really no lights on. And so this guy, whoever was doing it, couldn't really see well. They didn't see him using a flashlight, but he seemed to know exactly where the tank was. He seemed to know exactly where the platinum pipe was within the tank, and he was able to cut through it. So to them, it looked like that this was someone who knew what they were doing in this plant, who had been in this plant before, who likely maybe worked currently in the plant or had worked there previously. Then you can see at one point, and this is one of the darkest images of all of this, but you can see the masked intruder pushing some kind of like pallet jack with some large bag on it. Now they don't know what's in that bag. They don't know, is that the stolen platinum or was that a body? because there is no other masked intruder seen in the building. The only two people you ever see are Dale and this one masked intruder. So some wonder like, was Dale in that bag or was it the platinum? Because Dale is never seen again after that one initial moment. Something that the security guards who, the security team who works at the plant, they noticed is that at one point in that interaction when Dale is walking with the intruder, Dale looks directly up at the camera and the foot the, the image I'm showing right now is not the actual image. This was a recreation from Unsolved Mysteries, just to give you a clear image. But Dale looks head on directly into that camera. Dale as a security guard there knows where all the cameras are. Some wondered why if Dale was somehow involved in this heist, why would Dale look directly at the camera? Why would he not avoid the cameras? And so they wondered, was Dale looking up at the camera as some kind of plea for help? Or was Dale looking at the camera and saying, ha ha, I got you guys. I'm stealing from you. Suck it. You know, like, you know, like, they don't know. Dale's, one of Dale's daughters would say it just didn't make sense for him to look into the camera and acknowledge the camera. It just, it didn't, it didn't sit right with her. It also didn't sit right with her that if, you know, he did, was helping with this and he was planning to, you know, flee, why would he even bother packing a lunch and just leaving it there? Why would he leave his carton of cigarettes? Dale was a chain smoker. Why would he leave a full pack of, you know, carton of cigarettes there? Where was his gun? The gun was never found either. Why did he leave his backpack with his belongings behind? Why were the keys in the ignition of his truck? I mean, clearly he entered the building with his car keys and then his keys are found in the truck with if in the ignition what happened there why why did that occur did he do that to throw off the scent to make it look like maybe he was abducted maybe he tried to escape and try to get into his truck and maybe there was a second intruder who was doing a lookout and saw dale and stopped him from driving away and did something to him. There were really no cameras outside to look at. The intruder was in the building from 1040 until about 1250 AM. So he's in there for about two hours and they were clearly in there to steal that platinum. That was a planned thing. At that point, he's never seen again. Dale's never seen again. And now Dale is missing. There was never any, uh, they never found like the platinum anywhere. They never found that if the platinum was being sold, no one reported it, uh, it's, they, it was just gone. There have been no confirmed sightings of Dale Kerstetter ever since, not one. Looking into Dale, they did discover that he was like $30,000, $40,000 in debt and he needed money, but that's why he also was working a second job at that plant. Dale had thousands of dollars in his bank account, in his savings account. He had a 401k. His older daughters had plenty of money, so if Dale needed money, he could have just gotten it from them. And everything that everybody knew about Dale, like his family, his friends, and even his coworkers knew that this was not something Dale could ever do. He could never just plan or help with this heist. But it's also something you really can't say for sure that he wasn't involved. He never appeared on camera to be in any danger. He didn't appear to be fearful for his life. 
He almost appeared to be cooperating, but again, that could have just been him cooperating because he had a gun to his head or his back. Maybe this intruder threatened to kill him or his family or something like that. The other question is, is how did the intruder enter the building? Because there was no forced entry. Nothing was kicked in. And the protocol was the doors were supposed to always be locked so that no one could just simply walk in. However, one of his family members would note that sometimes the family would visit Dale at work and they were able to just walk in. So the doors weren't always locked like they were supposed to be. So the intruder could have known that or didn't know that and just got lucky. I guess there was a friend of Dale's who at one point was considered a suspect because this guy always seemed to have a lot of money but didn't really work and they never really knew how this guy got money. So was this like a guy who who had committed robberies in the past and knew Dale worked at this factory with this, you know, valuable platinum and maybe he worked with Dale or just got information from Dale, unwittingly from Dale, and planned this heist on his own. They looked into this guy. He had moved to Florida shortly after the platinum heist and they were able to essentially clear him of anything involved with this case. There was also that friend also told one of Dale's daughters that Dale had told him, the friend, about an employee at the plant named Ollie. Ollie had made jokes in reference to how easy it would be to steal platinum from the plant. It's possible that once Dale heard this employee say that, Dale may have been like, hmm, maybe you're right, that's a lot of money. And so it's, there's a possibility that Dale and this person named Ollie worked together to, for this heist. And on camera, they wanted to make it look like Dale was being coerced or whatever. And, and so there's a possibility though, that this Ollie person double crossed Dale in this and killed him somewhere along the way. The employee Ollie was looked into. They never found any evidence though to corroborate anything. Um, Ollie has since died, and so even if they wanted to question him, they really they can't. They also found out that one of uh, Dale's employees had been fired about a month prior to the heist, and he may have been angry enough to try to steal from them, but I don't know if they ever questioned this guy. Police also learned in their investigation that over in Ohio, there were actually three platinum heists that had happened in the recent like months or years prior to this one, but they don't know if there's any connection to this one or not. My my first thought was, and this is just a thought, this is not based on anything, is that what about the security guard that Dale supposedly relieved? Um, like he didn't, because this, the masked intruder came in just 10 minutes after Dale got there. And is it possible that that guy, because again, with the lack of cameras everywhere, is it possible that that's the guy who just put on a mask, maybe changed his clothes, and re-entered the building and did this? Was he working with Dale? That's a possibility, I guess. I don't know for sure, though. Like, no, no one does. Because that masked intruder has never been located, has never been identified. There's no, like, composite drawings of the dude. There's nothing. They have nothing on him. And like I said also, Dale himself has never been found, has never been seen, has never been reported anywhere. The statute of limitations on this particular crime, if it was just the burglary of the platinum, was seven years. And so some of his family was like, well, if he was involved, maybe he was just waiting out that seven years to and then come back after it's all done because there's nothing the police could do anymore. But that seven years came and went and then kept going and kept going and kept going. And Dale never made any appearance, never made any phone calls. Dale was seen at about 10.45 p.m. walking alongside this intruder in the plant and then gone. Never seen again. What happened to Dale? Were there more people involved? Was, the, was there a lookout? Maybe two lookouts? Was there someone on, you know, maybe each side of the plant or something? And just, just to, to check to see if anything was happening. That's a strong possibility. And Dale may have found a way to get out, like I said earlier. And maybe that other person saw that and took care of Dale. It's just a theory. It's just an idea, though. Like, there's no proof of that. There's really little proof at all. In 1990, Dale's family went to the Pennsylvania Superior Court to have Dale declared legally dead. But the court said, based on the evidence of what happened there with the security camera footage, there just wasn't enough that they could say legally that Dale is dead. And they also, at that point, refused to turn over any pension money from Dale to the family. And so the family got no compensation whatsoever. 
But then in 2014, Dale was finally declared legally dead. And they actually listed his date of death as the day of the disappearance. And at that point, the Corning uh, plant, which it was, no, is no, was no longer in service at that point in 2014, was ordered to pay 27 years worth of interest on, the, on Dale's pension. So they got a pretty penny. The family did. And they also got interest paid on Dale's life insurance, too. Police over the years have continued to kind of check into this case uh, because, you know, while the statute of limitations is far gone on the robbery portion, Dale is still a missing person. And so that case has just remained open. But they don't know. Like, they don't know if Dale was just a victim here. Was he just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Or was he an accomplice? Did he assist this person? Did he organize this? Did he plan it? Was this all his doing? They have no proof of that. You know, if the whole idea was to steal this platinum and then sell it, you would have some kind of paper trail that you would have at some point been able to follow. Unless they did it like this underground black market type thing, maybe, you know? But th that's the problem is there's so many just unknowns. My gut tells me, uh, and that's a big gut, let me tell you, uh, <laughs> tells me that I don't think Dale was involved. That's just kind of like, I don't know. That's just what my, my initial thought was, is I don't think he was involved. I think Dale was killed. I personally think that Dale was caught by surprise by this intruder and was cooperating with this intruder to a degree. And then once he's off camera, something happens. I think Dale tries to get out. I think he tries to escape. And I think there was an accomplice outside who maybe saw him and got, saw him getting into his truck and trying to flee, but then got Dale and killed him. I'm basing that off of no actual physical evidence. That's just my own personal theory and my own personal idea. I, I don't know that to be factual or truthful. It's just kind of what my gut tells me. I don't know, I could be completely wrong, absolutely. But just based on who Dale was as a person, his life, his, yeah, his finances were not super great, but he had plenty of options to ask for money to get money he was doing okay like it wasn't like he was filing for bankruptcy and his life was in shambles it's you know but it, it didn't make sense for him to plan this heist of platinum but i don't know that again that's just i'm just i'm just shooting ideas out of my face with no actual evidence dale has never been found no body has ever been found nothing it's just he was there and then he was not. But if he was murdered that night, somebody somewhere out there has got to know. If whoever planned this heist, it wasn't just a one person thing. There were likely very few people, many people involved in this. And these types of people, they talk, they brag, they, they go on and on. And so somebody might have overheard something. And that person might be you. If you have any information about the whereabouts of Dale Kerstetter, or what happened to him that night, or anything to do with the heist, you can contact 716-807-4684. You can report your information anonymously. You don't have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. If alive today, Dale would be somewhere around 87, 88 years old. And maybe he is out there. And you know what? His family just wants to know what happened, wants to know where he is, wants him home. And if Dale needs to be laid to rest because he was killed that night, then someone needs to tell police or his family where he is so they can bring him home. So please, if you have anything, please contact the police and help Dale and his family get the justice that he rightfully deserves. But that is it for this case, True Crime, Aruni, Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. Hope you found it interesting. Uh, as usual, if you're new here, hello, my name is Mike. I tell true crime stories here. So if you're into that kind of thing, please subscribe, give the video a like so more people can see it. I also tell short form true crime stories over on TikTok. You can find my TikTok links in the link tree in the description of this video below. And uh, if it's a case you want me to cover, just send me a really quick email, which is also listed below. Send me the name of like the individual or the case, where it happened, when it happened. I'll add it to the list. The list is 6,300 names long. So I, I pick cases at random. It may take me a while to get to that case, but I will get to it at some point eventually. But that is it for this video. So until the next time, we shall see ya. Ta-ta for now, true crime. Arunish. Yeah. Mm-hmm.